Welcome back to the Hard Forking channel and welcome to my wonderful co-hosts, Leanne and Mathematics. How are you both? Hey. Really good, thank you. So coming up today, people, lots of great stuff. We're going to be looking at technical analysis of a number of charts, discussing dead cats bouncing, um, and what we've been up to over the last week since we saw you last, how we've traded, projects we like, uh, obviously touch on the usual suspects, Axie Infinity. No, we're not only an Axie Infinity channel, by the way. There is more to us than that one trick, isn't there, people? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's like at least two tricks. We're two multi tricks. Multi-dimensional. Okay, we've got some great tricks for you today. Should we dive straight in to your BTC chart, Leanne? Sure. For a very long time now, I've had the 49K marked out as a really high energy zone, and we've finally tagged that. I think we just touched 50. And so now we just want to see if it can hold this region. Um I think with BTC, it's really important you plan for the possibilities. There are, there are no absolutes. We, we can make um, educated guesses based on the TA, but you have to um, put yourself in a position where you can um, be ready for all the possibilities. So are we going to get a steady climb up back to all-time highs? Are we going to retrace back to the monthly open around 41.5 um, zone? Or are we going to do a dead cat bounce and go back down to wherever, 20K or something. So the reason I'm giving you all these three scenarios is you really have to plan for all of them. Um, and it's no point um, just all in on something. You, you need to play out all scenarios and what you're comfortable with. I personally have some cash still position if we do drop lower. I am gunning for the retrace to the monthly um, before we start the climb back to all-time highs. That's what I would like to happen. So I'm planning for that possibility, but I'm also positioned so that if we still climb higher, I'm positioned to benefit from that too. So really important to keep all of those possibilities in mind. And we do have an ETF um, approval pending, so that could also, you know, um, pump the price up a bit at some point, whether that happens this year or not, back to all-time highs. And the dead cat bounce zone. I always think of little dead cats <laughs> bouncing off the floor. Such a strange um, term. Uh, so that happened at, I believe, the start of 2018 um, after the 2017 blow off top. So it is one of the possibilities that can happen with the charts. And like I said, it's just working out probabilities and possibilities and positioning yourself to cater for all of those. We've got a little bit of a bearish divergence on the RSI. So all I can suggest to our viewers is to plan for all possibilities. Very 50-50 at the moment. I shorted the market with, I haven't actually made a trade for for a while. Uh, it's not a huge one, it's a 5% uh, leverage uh, on buy a bet and if you are an experienced trader please support us and use our link below my thinking is that we will have a bit of a retrace uh i think that was the third option you just spoke about there um the middle you one. know yep. most of my stack is an investment it's a long hold i like having a flutter with trading um it's also a hedge against that oh, that the, those hodl positions so yeah i went short on on btc and eth entered at 49k on uh, Bitcoin. You also mentioned um, this ETF. Now, ETFs have been discussed a million times out of the US. Uh, I think we've got one in Canada now. So what is an ETF for, for people that don't know? It's an exchange traded fund. Uh, if you look at something like gold, uh, when gold finally got an ETF, uh, the price of gold was, was 400 bucks, uh, quickly moved up to 1400 after that ETF. Makes it a lot easier for uh, big institutional players to get exposure to the asset without actually holding uh, Bitcoin and having to go through figuring out the security, etc. So look, I, I do ultimately think that's going to happen. My thoughts on this market at the moment is possibly a nervous month coming up. We've got that infrastructure bill. Uh, goes to the the House uh, in the US to be voted on on September 27th. So, look, my attitude here is that Bitcoin isn't going to be affected by this infrastructure bill. It potentially will um, make problems for US uh, companies and residents 
primarily in the areas of DeFi, etc. It could, in, in, in fact, benefit Bitcoin. But overall, the macro for Bitcoin for me doesn't change. When I talk about shorting the market right now, I just want to stress that as a short-term trade um, from, from me. Um, I'm still massively bullish long term, so I don't see it as a, uh, a dead cat bounce. But maybe, Leanne, if we could just have a look at that uh, 217, 218 uh, part of the bit, uh, the Bitcoin chart so we can explain maybe a bit more about what a dead cat bounce is. Go. Right. Dead cat bounce example. We have the 2017 parabolic advance, which had a blow off top here. And then we... You know, we took a big dump. We bounced up again, and that's the. <laughs> Don't, are you going to put a graphics for that, Jesse? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We took a big dump, and then we had a dead cat <laughs> bounce here, which trapped a lot of people, including myself at the time. I was a new to the game, uh, and when you didn't take profits in this region here, you had to suffer through the rest of the bear market if you let it. Yes, held on to it. We did. I went and lived in a crypto community uh, in, in various parts, well, two of them actually, in various parts of Thailand. It was a, a long, long winter, bear, yeah, winter. bear market. Yes, but a lot of fun actually. And, and you know, that's where I saw a lot of people actually building projects. So you know, bear markets aren't all doom and gloom. I just simply don't think that what we're currently seeing is a dead cat bounce and on the verge of a crypto winner. You know, the macro picture here just doesn't suggest that. We've got a huge amount of institutional money looking for complete clarity to come into the space. It is happening. I mean, somebody just bought a billion dollars worth of, of Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. So a lot of these are OTC Not trades. Mr. Saylor? How many did Mr. Saylor? Uh, I, I think he bought 170 so million dollars. But yeah, so I mean, it could be him. But the thing to remember here is, you know, here's an article about Coinbase as well. Uh, you know, the thing to remember is a lot of these big trades do happen uh, off exchanges and, and what's called uh, OTC, over-the-counter over trades. Um, so we've got uh, Coinbase who are basically in, in, investing half a billion of their own uh, cash or cash equivalents into crypto assets. So they're, they're in effect investing in the crypto space. So it's going to be quite interesting to see uh, how that portfolio is made up. Did you see the whale alert of the, the recent Bitcoin that was pulled off Coinbase into a private wallet? No. It, what was, it was something like for like a couple billion dollars worth of Bitcoin mm. was pulled off Coinbase recently. I mean, how Well, much? this is my point. I mean, the, you know, out, outflows have been huge lately. You know, we've got to remember that, you know, there's only 2% of the world that's still in crypto at the moment. This is nothing. Another reason I went short is here are the, uh, this is an hourly time frame, but this is the, uh, the longs versus shorts. Another reason I went short at 65% uh, along, and I know from being in this market as long as I have that these leveraged markets have a huge impact on price action. Uh, and when a lot of people are long or a lot of people are short, the market often moves violently uh, the other direction. So let's see if I'm an idiot. That's a short term short, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> long term <laughs> bullish, though, <Let's> people. <laughs> Let's see. The other short I'm in, and I hate shorting the market, but, you know, that's, a, that's what a trader does. Uh, Ethereum, what's happening? Okay, short and sweet. Ethereum, having well, it could be a double top or it could be nice consolidation before another upswing. Uh, I did write NFT madness here. I'm just, you know, seeing so much, like, what, these rocks that are going for hundreds of ETH and... Um, I, it makes me wonder if at some point these an NFT whales will sell their ETH. Um, it's just a question I have, which is why I put it there. And I've also put here, as Chris Dunn, my mentor, says, BTC is the DJ. So if BTC decides to retrace a little bit, so will Ethereum. Uh, and Bitcoin be, dominance. Yeah, we'll be looking for the 2800 zone and the 2500 zone. Yeah, what other charts are we having a look at today, Leanne? Well, you requested EWT. Yeah, I'm still look. I'm still doing my uh, my research on this one. It has sparked my interest, though. Yeah, this would be the type of alt you you put a little bit that you're willing to just let sit there and um, you're not attached to the outcome, other than 
of course you want it to go up, but if it did um, stay in a lull for a while that you were okay with, with having your capital tied up in it. Um, it's got a bullish posture at the moment. It's revisiting its break, local breakout zone, which is nice. It might form a cup and handle. I've just highlighted some zones here that you might watch for if BTC decides to dumpity dumps. Uh, you might stack some lower orders if you wanted to get in. You might uh, watch the $10 zone to reload if you um, it consolidates a bit more. And the $18 mark is high energy zone up here and it's the 0.618 fib. So that would be a profit taking zone for people. Um, but yeah, that, that would be one, Sean, I would recommend only a small amount um, in and just seeing, letting it ride. Yeah, I mean, the reason I've had a look at this one is uh, it's got some pretty serious backers. I, I believe there was a grant from uh, Google involved uh, in the setup of this uh, non-profit low carbon world you know this is a, a big thing from everything I've read about it I do see the application of blockchain here it's obviously a permission blockchain which I'm, I'm never a huge fan of that although that is coming thick and fast at the moment I do have some involvement in that world with regards to uh, security tokens etc uh, so yeah you know it, it's, it's a bit of a speculator at this point but yeah go check it out the other one that I'm uh, pretty happy with at the moment Leanne is we're always looking at it. Rev token. I think anything in the gaming space is just on fire at the moment. Animoca Brands, the company behind uh, this token, are obviously throwing a huge amount of money around uh, marketing-wise. So what's the chart telling us, Leanne? Yeah, the chart, again, is in a bullish trend. It's surfing my waves and look for key areas of resistance up at 41 and 64 cents. And again, that is one that um, if you got in early enough, you can let the trend play out. So it looks good. There's some volume there, but yeah, I wouldn't be actively trading it. I think you got in quite low, didn't you? I bought this a very long time ago. Uh, I, I sold the top on it, uh, forgot about it, but got, got a nice re-entry uh, at around five cents. Mm. Um, I can't, I, look, look, it's one of the games that I actually do really like. Uh, it's, it's had issues with the way it's been structured, but it seems to be getting sorted out. But, you know, like anything, get in there and, and check these games out, see how big the community is. Uh, for, you know, I've, I've placed a small bet on, on the success of Animoca Brands. Uh, they're, 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 they've invested in so many other games in the space. And as we all know through our experience with, with Axie, uh, NFT gaming is, is just the hot topic at the moment. Um, so on that note, uh, obviously a lot of the community got a bit nervous about the article that was published uh, on the Philippine government making a statement around tax. So look, what I would say on that at this point, I don't think there's any reason for alarm. There's certainly not financial advice or tax advice on, on this channel, people, but we'll do our best to keep you updated as, as this one plays out. But effectively, I just think they've noticed that there is a, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people playing this game. They they obviously want their tax from it. So whether you're running a store or playing a game, you still need to declare income. So there was nothing really in that statement. I think where potential problems might lie is for uh, companies based in the Philippines, uh, potentially being registered. How that might impact Sky Mavis moving forward. We'll just have to wait and see. But there looks like there's nothing imminent there but yeah we'll do absolutely obviously we've got a, a community around this game so we will keep you posted if thousands of dollars of millions of dollars are being uh, distributed um the government will notice and do something about it of course yeah i mean look you know for me also if you you you've got an economy uh, you think about it they're not having to produce anything but all of a sudden you've got all this capital flowing into you your country from, uh, from, you know, from primarily from Western countries flowing into your economy. That's great. That's fantastic. That's what everyone wants at the moment. So are they likely to clamp down? I mean, I can't, as I say, I can't give financial or tax advice, but to me that wouldn't make any sense for a government to try and stop huge capital inflows. They want their yeah. tax bill. Yeah, like shutting down your country. Like, why would you do that? Stopping all <laughs> income and stopping all economy and... You know, just ruining the world. Why would? Huh. Oh, imagine. Imagine. Imagine doing that. <laughs>
So, mathematics, what have you been up to over the last week? Do you still Have you still got your ape? Have you bought anything new? Have you got anything yeah, to share my, with the, us? The, the two Vox uh, NFTs that I had bought um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I'm just kind of waiting. At, uh, I'm waiting for Townstar to become play-to-earn uh, friendly. And um, because with Vox, you can, you'll be able to have scholars just like uh, Axie, uh, but for Townstar. In, in, under the Gala Games Network, um, I can tell that there's something to it because uh, those those NFTs that I bought, those Vox NFTs, like a builder, a farmer, they're they're getting um, continuous rising offers. Um, uh, they're not for sale on my uh, OpenSea, but they're getting offers uh, that are growing. So obviously, those Vox have value uh, on the market right now, and there's people trying to pick them up because. Yeah. Uh, other than the ape, those are the other NFTs that I'm getting continuous offers for. So the Vox, you guys, you can check out collectibles. Uh, I, it looks like they're going to be of use in the not too distant future. What about you, Leanne? Any uh, new moves over the last week? I look on OpenSea a lot and I see what's happening. Um, but I haven't. I looked at the Gary V. Um, Women of the World. Was it Women of the World? Yes. Oh, did you finally get one? No, I did not buy one. I was like, no, this does not speak to me. Um, I'm, they're all interested. But it's about women. I couldn't imagine. Like, no, I wasn't going to pay for ETH or whatever for what I saw. So, um, and remembering, I grew up, I was an art teacher and my grandfather and uncle were quite well-known artists. So I've grown up in the art space. So something really has to speak to me before I put any money into it. And I need to see socially what's happening with it, um, which I should have trusted Jesse's instinct on the social aspect of the apes. But <laughs> um, but there's some beautiful stuff in, the, in on OpenSea, some really beautiful artwork. So it's definitely got me interested. I'm looking all the time. Um, I actually found an Indonesian artist the other day. I might bring that up in future shows that I was keeping an eye on. Um, but yeah, some really beautiful, interesting digital art. I love it. So Gary V, mm. he does actually have a, uh, a woman of the world hanging on his wall. Okay. Um, but he's just tweeted. <laughs> he's tweeted. He's tweeted this out as an NFT because Gary is saying if you're a solo artist and you have never been able to sell a single NFT. But have it on a marketplace. Please share it with Gary. Number one, because he wants to buy. And he wants others to see it in his thread and buy and support you. So there you go. Send Gary all your art, people. Yeah. I mean, gosh, if you can get We'd like to see one of your pictures as well, Leanne. I have a few things. I haven't painted or illustrated for a long time, though. That's a bit of a past life of mine. But why don't we turn why don't we turn one into an NFT and see if we can uh, either get Gary to buy it or sell it on the show? Maybe I might do something completely different. Might inspire me to. You know how to mint an it. NFT? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, there we go. We could show everyone next week. We get one of your pictures and turn it into an NFT. Okay. Well, let's 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 keep that in the pipeline. We're obviously looking at doing that with a lot of our content. Uh, as you probably know by now, uh, Mathematics is a very talented music producer, filmmaker. Uh, we've worked on a, a number of projects together, so that is definitely part of our roadmap. Uh, Jordan Peterson did a podcast with uh, these guys called the uh, the Bitcoiner Book Club, and uh, it was actually a pretty fascinating podcast. Like they really connect um, the technology and the concept behind Bitcoin with what Jordan Peterson talks about a lot, which is, you know, uh, finding a, a sense of responsibility in, in your life and, and really like taking control. You know, there are people who admire the ideas of central planning and you think, well, maybe there's 40 people doing your central planning. And so maybe they're the smartest people in the world and they're doing your central planning, but they have to calculate on the fly a virtually infinite amount of information if they don't have free market prices at their disposal. They have to calculate what metal is worth, what nails are worth, what labor is worth, what rubber is worth, what cleanup is worth, what nursing is worth, etc., etc. And they have to do all those comparisons and they have to do those computations. And there's actually no way even technically of doing that. And the alternative is to distribute that 
calculation across a virtually infinite number of actors, or actors in the billions at least, and let every single person act as a computational device and sum all that. And that's what the free market does. It's not, it's not even in principle replaceable by a logical cognitive mechanism. I can't see how that, it is. That's exactly right. It's not even possible that a centralized bureaucracy a centralized computing model can compete with a distributed computing model of the free market. We could actually, in fact, say that the free market is a pure economic democracy. People are voting by buying and selling, and whatever price is generated on any given asset, that's effectively the truth of what it trades at. Uh, any intervention on that, any intervention, any regulation, any pricing czar as they had in the USSR, you move towards, you move along that spectrum towards an economic tyranny where we have now the arbitrary wishes of a few overriding what the free market democracy is selecting. It's great. I, I honestly think that politicians need to be really careful here because, you know, the, the distrust between, towards so many governments at the moment, um, you know, I potentially think, you know, look, the macroeconomic factors just, to me, make it insane not to have some of your portfolio in Bitcoin. Um, but, you know, taking that a step further, you know, are we going to end up with a, a global currency here? Um, you know, we're seeing SLP being actually used as a currency in the Philippines. I mean, it's been accepted in a, a number of stores now. Um, you know, for me, Bitcoin always had that promise of, of this global currency. We can easily trade with anyone we want, uh, you know. Can't be censored, uh, can't be taken off you, all that good jazz that I always go on about. But... You know, just that 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 distrust um, of of so many governments. I think we could see a massive retail freaking flood, FOMO. So while I think, you know, as I said at the top of the show, I think we might see a little bit of a pullback here, but that is just a rocket fuel to send this thing higher. When that FOMO kicks in, I think, you know, we haven't really seen a parabolic move uh, during this bull run. I think that's yet to come. So you know, that six. Um, that that six figure bitcoin for me is absolutely on the on the table here for the end of the year uh you know guys like jordan peterson coming to the table now just the, it's a different landscape now totally different you know there's credible people talking about it institutions are here uh regulatory clarity uh compliance that's that's all happening uh, you know i talk to my friends that, that that run compliance departments at banks i know what's going on in the background uh big things are going I'd, I'd like to give a little update on El Salvador, if I may. They're starting to roll out the uh, ATMs, which is fantastic. So, um, because El Salvador was always, let's wait and see what happens if they actually move towards doing what they said they were going to do. So, um, it is, you know, um, rolling out. It seemed like when the El Salvador news came out, it was like, everyone was like, psych, but then immediately it was like a it was like a collective that's cute but they'll never yeah. pull that off uh but but that doesn't mean that even though everyone said that and kind of pushed it to the side el salvador is still on the same track yeah so yep. if el salvador is still pushing forward on mm -hmm. the same track mm -hmm. then who knows maybe it really will be and that's that's hand. quite a quick implementation so um if they can do it that quickly after announcing that that's that's fantastic and we I, might all be moving to El Salvador yeah we'll all be going to El Salvador absolutely uh, they just need to start issuing cheap passports because you know, the, the other thing I'm seeing in the crypto space uh, and it obviously has a bit, bit to do with, with COVID as well I think just the, the amount of people that are looking for second passports at the moment is, is off the charts uh, I've personally spoken to a, to a number of people recently uh, so yeah that might be a good move for them Yes. An ATM, a passport, and a beachfront home, and a does the passport spit out of the ATM? The capital of the world. <laughs> put the card in. Doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's great. The other interesting thing we were talking about these stores accepting SLP in the in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, I also read an article uh, earlier today that was saying more Filipinos have a Ronin wallet mm. for their SLP yeah. than own a credit card. I would believe that. Holy shit. <laughs> Incredible. So their store of value is in SLP at the moment. And mm. I actually did a little survey with my scholars um, to see if that was the case, that they were using it in stores. 
None of them had actually done it, but they were aware of it in the bigger cities. A lot of them were in smaller provinces, so um, it wasn't so prevalent there, but um, definitely in the big cities, they know that merchants, hairdressers, barbers, um, grocery store, little stores and that had some of them definitely were, uh, there was a tattoo parlour, I think. Um, they were definitely accepting SLP as payment. So super interesting. And that's when, you know, we can laugh at Doge, but if people put their store of value in it and it becomes an acceptable traded crypto, then, you know, who are we to laugh at it? But um, it, it's very interesting to watch this store of value play out. And of course, Bitcoin is the king, uh, but what is tradable amongst communities is another story. Yeah, well, the argument with with, with Bitcoin, and this is obviously why we had the, these hard forks, uh, because you know if you read the white paper, uh, it's digital cash. That's that's the title of it, and you know it's fascinating to see something like SLP, you know, being used as a currency now. It's happening with some other cryptos as well, but in Bitcoin's case. You know, you had these two sort of economic schools of thought. One, uh, one being, you know, the Bitcoin, the BTC maxis, who basically say something needs to become a store of value before it becomes a currency. So their thinking is, you know, they, they wanted to keep that block size uh, really small, which hindered its use to be able to buy a coffee with it because the transaction times take too long, etc. Uh, whereas Bitcoin Cash increased the block size, quicker transaction times, you can buy a coffee with it. But the BTC uh, thinking is that we will ultimately reach a point where the value of or the price value uh, levels out completely, uh, and then with Lightning it becomes a currency. It's usable on the daily, and we're just seeing explosive growth in Lightning at the moment. There's games being built on it. Uh, in, in fact, I'm going to do a dedicated show on, on Lightning in the very near future. Um, that is an important thing to keep an eye on. But just in summary, you know, Bitcoin BTC, yeah, very much digital gold. That's why I compared that that launch of the ETF and what it did to the price of gold. If we get a Bitcoin ETF, I expect the price to skyrocket as well. But at the moment, it's digital gold. It's a store of value. Will be a currency at some point. There you go, kids. Hope you learnt something. <laughs> Any other uh, parting uh, knowledge Uncle, for Uncle our Sean's. audience today, people? <laughs> uh, I just That'll wanted do. to say that um, I've had a few people this week. I've encouraged them to peacefully protest against whatever feelings they had by buying a bit of Bitcoin. And a lot of the comments I'm getting is, I can't afford it. Uh, and again, I want to reiterate um, to our audience, if people ask you that question, to make sure that they understand you don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin, that you can buy portions of Bitcoin uh, for whatever value you please. What I Joe says say is skip lunch and, and buy some Bitcoin. I, I, I use intermittent fasting now that I'm getting a bit older and it does actually work. So I, I only eat once a day. So I, my breakfast and lunch money goes into Bitcoin. Maybe consider stop buying uh, things that, that the television screen and the advertisements keep telling you to buy when you know for sure you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Stop mm -hmm. buying things. Stop being such a materialist consumer. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and if you're going to go that far, stop putting poison in your body. Stop stop drinking so much alcohol. Stop popping so many things in your mouth. <laughs> like, there's so many things out there you could stop purchasing and buy some crypto instead. Not financial advice. <laughs> Not dietary advice. <laughs> Just fucking stop, like, putting stupid things in your life. It's so simple. Yeah. Stop. Look, it's very, yeah, Jesse, it's 100% true. And, you know, th this is the important thing with Bitcoin. I, you know, I... I got into Bitcoin in 216. I think you were my first recruit. Um, the One of the massive changes for me was you realize, and this came about because, you know, I, I lived on Bitcoin. We had a circular economy on the island I was living on, so I paid all my bills in Bitcoin. And, you know, then the thing shot up to 20K, and I'm like, holy shit, you I know, my bar bill was cost. the equivalent of like 20 grand. <laughs> um, and that taught me, you know, hold this thing. It's a, you know, it is that store of value. It taught me to save. Whereas in the past, money would come in my bank account and, God damn it, we're going on holiday or I get in a new car or, you know. So that's another big thing that comes with being a Bitcoiner. You yeah, that's what I liked about the Jordan Peterson interview is that it, when Jordan asked these guys, what is it about Bitcoin that has anything correlated with, you know, taking, taking control of your life uh, and and you know being able to you know 
keep your house in order and all this. And it was that exact point. It was that like, you know, it makes you realize the value of things and the value of your own worth. And, and honestly, the only reason that all, everyone on this planet, so many people on this planet uh, can't figure out why they're going through so much torment and, and they feel like they're practically enslaved is because they're participating in that. It's not like the, most people are being forced into the issues that they're having. A lot of them are putting themselves into those positions and they're not even really realizing it. Well, we are exactly, you're 100% correct, Jesse. I mean, most, you know, the, the, the student debt is the biggest asset on the American government's balance sheet, student debt. You know, so people leave higher education already massively in debt. Uh, you know, if you get a home, more debt. It's just debt. Our entire current financial system is debt based. Bitcoin is savings based. It's a paradigm shift. It's completely different and it's important for you to understand that. Don't be a debt slave. All right, on that note, some some great thoughts there from, from you both, but there is so much going on in the crypto space. You know, we've got a couple of things that we're, we're, we're working on at the moment, uh, crypto businesses. Um, just get involved in the space. Get in there and learn. You're still so early. You don't have to follow the traditional path. I'm not quite sure how long that traditional path is even going to be around for the way things are heading. So great opportunity here, people. Tune into this channel. We're an education channel. We're here to help. Please put any questions you got below. Uh, follow both of these two awesome people on Twitter. Their links are below as well. And playing us out is the awesome tune by Mathematics, which we don't have a video for yet. So we want your ideas. But here it is. Bitcoin Dominance. See you all tomorrow. Bitcoin Dominance.